I've got my workspace set up. I have all of the tools I'm gonna use up here. I have my plastic printing plate. So for a monotype, this is just a blank piece of plastic. I have one that is 12 by 12 inches and that's larger than the paper that I'm going to use. So it's helpful to put the size paper, just one sheet of your paper, so I'm using nine by six paper, that's gonna go underneath, just so I know where to put my paint or my ink. So I can see that paper under there and that can be my guide. I also am not putting anything down on my table because this is my home studio, it's just me working today. If I was working with my daughter, my three-year-old, over on her shorter work table, I would probably put some paper down underneath and then put this on top. When I teach at school, I cover the tables completely with newsprint. You could also just use old newspaper or if you have a tablecloth for art, that's great. And then I put this on top. And if you're using something that um, has a lot of images already on it as your table covering, I definitely recommend putting a white paper underneath so it's easier to see your images when you're adding paint and drawing and making your image. I also have my brayer. So that's this tool. This is a speedball brayer. Then I also have my paint. At school, I usually use tempera paint, and I'll put a link to that below. I do not have that at home. I have finger paints, so we're gonna try these out. I have some bubble wrap for pressing and a bunch of little tools. So these are just toys, Legos, different tools that I can use. An old lid that works great for circles a gear piece, some old tape containers, also great for making circles. So all of those are ready for me. I also have some Q-tips for drawing. And the other thing I have to the side is some newsprint. And these are pieces of newsprint that have already been used for printmaking. I also have my paper. So a bunch of paper that I've cut, pre-cut to the size that I wanted. My first step, is to get the paint onto my printing plate. So we're gonna try a little bit of blue. And I am limiting my colors. I'm using a limited color palette because I'm making a landscape and I plan to draw back into it. And I've done this with first and second graders, um, this specific landscape project. Uh, and they loved it. So the artist that inspired this was Xavier Castellanos, who is a Swiss-born Mexican artist, and he does really colorful landscapes from his travels all over the world. We started with just blue and green, and I do not have green finger paint, so I'm using blue and yellow. What do those two make when you mix them together? If you said green, that is the right answer. So I'm gonna just use my brayer. I squirted a little bit of paint at the top. I'm gonna use my brayer to roll that down onto the area where I want to make my print. Notice that I'm being a little bit gentle. I'm starting to blend those colors together. I'm just gently rolling it. I'm trying to keep my paint inside the plastic so I'm not going off the edges of the plastic because remember, my paper is smaller than my plastic. I don't wanna waste any of that nice paint. I wanna keep it on the plastic, keep it on my print so I can get it onto my paper. So I'm just moving that paint around a little bit. I'm kind of blending the colors swirling those colors around. And you'll notice you can make some nice textures just with your brayer. When I've got that paint kind of spread around, I'm gonna work a little bit fast because this paint is gonna dry. And once it is dry, it is not gonna come off of there onto my paper. I'm gonna press my bubbles down. Notice that I'm just gently pressing them. I'm not popping them. 
and I'm pressing them bubble side down. So not the smooth side down. Look at those circles on there. I can go ahead and take that and press it onto my paper. That's gonna help clean off my bubble wrap, but it is also gonna give me a beautiful print already. So I've got one piece of paper that has that great bubble texture on it already, that pattern, that texture. I could use some of my other tools. Maybe I want some little circles in here. I could do a bunch of circles. I could do some bigger circles. Maybe I want to draw my landscape. So I'm gonna draw just some little hills. Maybe I'll put like a little house on top, some trees. Maybe a smaller tree because that tree in the back is gonna be further away. So that's gonna look like it's smaller even if it's about the same size as this one. This one is really close to us. So it looks super big. So I've got my house, I've got my trees. I could add some little clouds maybe up here. That's a pretty good little landscape. Let's set that down and before my paint starts to dry, I'm gonna press my paper right on top, trying to line it up. Then, see there's all this extra paint out here? I don't wanna get that all over my fingers when I press. So I am gonna use that handy newsprint and push that down on top. Then, I'm using the palm of my hand to rub. I'm giving my paper a nice massage. It has had a long day. Give it a nice massage all over, making sure you press the whole thing. Don't forget any little corners. Then I can peel up my newsprint. I can start to see how that image is peeking through. I can peel up just a careful little corner. I can peel up my print and let's see how it worked. Wow. That turned out pretty cool. Notice that my print is a mirror image of my printing plate. So that's a good thing to know with printing. Because of that, I encourage students not to include any words. Later on, when you get really, really good at printing, you can start trying words in reverse. So you have to learn how to write words backwards, like in a mirror, which can be a little tricky. So when we're just learning to print, we start out with no words, just images. So we've got one nice print. Let's make some more.